scripture. Ezra 7 to 10. Based on the Bible. The people of Israel and Judea had been carried into captive because of their sin. The worst sin was idolatry that had infested the people of God as they intermarried with the people of the surrounding nations. Now approximately 60 years after the first contingent of Jews had made their way back to their homeland, Ezra followed with a king's ransom to help rebuild the land. Ezra expected to find a nation committed to the God of its forefathers. Instead, he found a nation that had slipped back into its idolatrous past. The cancer which had nearly destroyed the nation had returned. But with the skill of a surgeon, Ezra prepared to operate on that cancer and make the nation whole. Well, everything's just about done. Um. Well, the hard part's done. We got here with all the gold and silver. I still think it was done not to ask King Artaxerxes for the regiment of soldiers to go with us. I couldn't. Why not? We could have protection. We were carrying almost 29 tons of silver and 30 pounds of gold. That's enough to tempt any thief. I'm supposed to go to King Artaxerxes and say, please, kind king. Since we have so much to carry, could you please send all the soldiers you can spare to protect us? It sounds reasonable to me. That would have been dumb. Hadn't I told King Arthur Dixies of the great power of God? But, but, would King Arthur Dixies have had any respect for a God who needs the protection of a man? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Well, of course, but a little extra couldn't hurt. It couldn't. Don't you read history? Not all the time. Read it, then we'll talk. See how God wants his people to recognize his protection. Well, anyway, now we can relax. Relax, are you crazy? It's done. The priests have all the money. Everything's been delivered. Time to put up the old feet. Sit back and... Eliezer, we all get to work. We have been entrusted by Artaxerxes to see that everything is done according to his decree. More importantly, we must see that things are done by God's decree. Oh, well Ezra, that should be no problem. No problem. Have you looked at that paper I've given to you? Marriage certificate. Everything seems to be in order. In order? How can you say, in order? The man is Levite. Sure. The priest can marry. The woman is Canaanite. Are you sure? I only wish there was room for doubt. How dumb can these people be? Don't make a big deal out of it. It's only one couple. Haven't you heard that one bad apple can ruin the whole barrel? Well, yes. A little yeast lakes all the dough rise. Well, yes. And this is not an isolated case. There must be hundreds, maybe thousands of marriages between God's people and other races. Hey, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe all the heathen women are learning to respect God. Read your history. The road to righteousness is narrow and difficult. The road to evil is wide and easy. I have reports of the activities of the men of Israel. Already, they are forgetting the decrees of God. So remind them. Don't you see? We were taken into captivity for the very sin now being committed. We must end this matter. Now. I prayed and confessed our sin to God. Our sin? You didn't do anything wrong. If the people of Israel sinned, the leaders have also sinned. You must make this right, Eliezer. Call all the people together. Now. This very second. But Ezra, it's raining, cats and dogs. Even stronger than that, horses and cows. We'll get pneumonia. Which is worse, a few sniffles or the destruction of Israel. Call the people. Okay, but they aren't going to like it. They would worry about whether when they face the wrath of God. Done. A small imaginary incident from the book of Ezra.